Welcome to Look Behind the Look, the celebrated podcast that explores your favorite looks in film, television, and fashion history. Through conversations with the fashion world's elite and award-winning hair, makeup, and costume designers on sets around the world, you will see and hear exciting tales from behind the scenes, career origin stories, and tons of advice and tips. I'm your host, Tiffany Bartok. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Look Behind the Look. Today, I am talking to hair department head Susie Mazzarisi Allison. She's the hair department head for this great new show on Apple TV called Hello Tomorrow, which you may or may not have seen. If you haven't seen it, it's really something to see. It's The art design is incredible. The hair and makeup is beautiful. The costumes are awesome. The performances are great. You're going to love seeing Billy Crudup and Allison Pill in this. They give great performances. And this whole term of retro future is something that we talk about. I was pretty unfamiliar with it. I was like, okay, it's either retro or it's future. But retro future is really becoming the rage. It's a very cool aesthetic. And we really get into the nitty gritty of it in this show. We also talk about Susie's amazing career. She has done it all. You're going to hear all about her work on one of my all-time favorite movies, which is The Greatest Showman. Is that one of your favorite movies too? I feel like there's like a secret society for this film. I love it so much and nobody ever talks about it with me. You guys want to talk about it? Please enjoy this conversation with Susie and head on over to Apple TV and check out this show. You're going to love it and I want to hear what you think. No one here is not a dreamer. Not in a world like this where you can have it all. We live with miracles at our fingertips. We got robots taking out the trash. We fly into the stars. And that's what I want for you and your families. That's the dream you all deserve. Soon you folks will be saying, wow. Susie, hi. How are you? Hi. I'm good. How are you? (laughs) What, What everybody does not know is that we have made Herculean efforts here. Thank you so much for all the back and forth. I'm so happy to be finally talking to you about this amazing film. I mean, um, TV show, which actually it feels like a film. It's the best production design I have seen in forever. It's gorgeous. And, um, I wanted to talk to you about what retro future is. Exactly. Right. Cause that's, that's what hello tomorrow definitely is. Right. right. Well, I, I, would, I would say it's like when retro future to me means when uh, something in the past, it might pre- predict the future. Might predict the future. Yeah. Yeah. So like, you know, let's just say like we have the fifties, let's say the 1950s look of the show, which is basically the basic set design, costume, hair design. Um, and then you have robots and you have these cars and you have flying objects and briefcases that move and all that stuff. So it's basically, to me, that means, it, it, lots of old movies do that. Back, back in the 60s, when you see movies about the moon, you would see a lot of like 50s ads in the newspapers and you would see people wanting, basically Billy story is going to the moon. So, right. I mean, I mean, basically that's pretty much what I think it means. To me, that's what it means. Yeah, I yeah. Mean, if you ask a set designer, they might say something different than me, but for hair, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm because gonna, the hair yeah. was influenced by the past. Right. I mean, exactly. Right. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. so, so you stuck to that inspiration for, we did. for the hair. Yeah. Okay. So we what, yeah. what were some of your sources of in, inspiration? I mean, I'm getting twilight zone vibes big time. <laughs> um, <laughs> Mainly for Billy, of course, but like uh, right. Allison Pill is, you know, flawless always, and right. her hair is on point. And okay, I, I have another question for you after you tell me a little bit about your inspirations. Well, basically, I, the, I would say more of the uh, actresses from the past, like with mm-hmm. with Shirley, with Shirley's wig. She wore a wig, a short, and it was designed more towards the '60s to make her look a little bit more uh, sophisticated, since she mm. was his right hand arm, his right arm. Um, was basically by um, Gina Lodobrigida, mm. who was wore very in the yes. 60s. She had that short, short hair. With totally. The thing on the side. So that was my inspiration for her. Oh, I love that. With Myrtle, I'd say it was more cross between uh, uh, Marilyn Monroe mm. and, yeah, and Grace Kelly, but yes. more with a housewife twist to it. Yes. That like, sense. yes, like a housewife. So your basic 50s, look- yeah, smoother with the finger waves and the, the curls and that was for her. And then for Barbara, the Jack's mom, it was basically, I, I went to leave it to Beaver, you know, with, uh, with the mother from 
leave it to beaver is basically what june what june, that. june, june cleaver, exactly right? june yeah, cleaver, june cleaver, yeah. yeah. <laughs> i love that and then put it up in a twist in the back it wasn't exactly like red but that was my form of what i thought that character should look like was yes. in that in that in that era yeah that character is awesome i love yeah. her yeah. She's, yeah, hilarious. she's really good in the show yeah 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> what, what are some of the most important things to keep in mind about this genre like um, are you totally so that you can focus? Do you keep it fifties in your mind and not deal with the future at element at all? That's just maybe pr production design. No, we, well, as the time went on in the show, basically for the hair, it was definitely the fifties mm. with costumes and makeup. They added mm -hmm. much brighter colors mm -hmm. instead of keeping right. the soft pastels of the, of the fifties, but with the hair, they really wanted to stick to this, stick to that fifties look. And, and I, I took it a little bit into the sixties, like with Shirley's wig. And as time went on, um, different episodes, as we go to the, whether well, we're actually boarding the plane, you'll see some of the stewardesses with much sharper lines and bobs that look a little bit more futuristic than what, what everybody else looks like. And that was basically like the background, you know, ah, your featured background. And so they okay. went to a little bit more spacey look and the costumes got a little bit more spacey looking, but, but for most of the show, we pretty much kept the hair in the, in the fifties. Okay. You know, I, I'm early sixties, really... maybe a little bit. Yeah. I haven't, yeah. I, I'm on episode four. Five. I'm entering episode five, yeah. so I can't wait to see yeah. the play. Yeah, I think that's like eight, nine. It's just toward, that that stuff is like towards the end before they actually. You'll you'll see. You'll see. <laughs> you'll, you'll, see, see. you'll see. Oh, I can't wait. I can't wait. Yeah. I know this definitely has good cliffhangers. I I devour each episode, but now I'm I'm caught up to so that it's weekly now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and what are some moments that you looked at on the monitor there, and you were like, okay. We nailed it. What are, what are yeah. some some yeah. scenes and moments that made you feel yeah. really well, great? Well, definitely, as far as as a hairdresser, we mm -hmm. look at just the hair. You know? yep. I mean, yep. I've had to look at the whole show, yep. but when I'm looking at a monitor, I always think that things should be better than what they are. Because <laughs> even though you nail it, you always say, oh, I could have done that better. Well, I should have done this. That's why you're that's good what at we, what you do. Yeah. <laughs> that we beat ourselves up all the time. Of course. Um, um, I would have to say that uh, Myrtle in episode three, when she's at the phone booth, there's a couple <gasps> shots of her that are just the back of her wig, the front of her, that whole inside the phone booth because it's yes. so spaceshipy and so into the retro future. Yes. And then she, she just looks so 50s inside the booth, that one. And there's so many shots of, of Billy and, and Jack's different, you know, close-ups of him that that I thought we really nailed it on. And, and I'd have to say, Shirley, there's a couple shots of Shirley in, in episode two where she just, the wig looks great. I mean, it's, you know, with the whole costume and the hair together and she's so carries it off so well. Yes. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, I, I'm curious, you just spurred me um, envisioning the the grocery store scene with Allison Pill. And I was curious. Oh, yes. Oh, I was I curious know, what right? that day was like on set. I mean, oh, God. did it take all day? Was it a disaster? Um, well, it, it <laughs> didn't take all day because with, you know, as we do these Apple TV shows and these shows, we, we move a little faster now. Okay. So we had to be prepared. It did take a while because her acting was so and every take, every time she knocked it down and then she shook her head and she's going crazy. Yeah. Of course, her hair and her wig is going mad. So each week I had to reset it each time. So, you know, because it moves and she's throwing things and totally. keeping her hat on. And yeah. Right. And right. She's right. a the head hat. mover. She's, she acts. She's like all over the place. So it's like you got to <laughs> stand by and every take. You got to be right there to put it, it, fix it all back up. I love yeah. it. Do you have somebody who's on standby when you're like, okay, Allison's working right now. So make sure you're <laughs> at the ready. Is that something you yeah. just know? Well, your basically, team? Uh, yeah, but actually I was there for her because I actually did okay. her wigs. So I was there. And if I wasn't there, then I have my, my key and the rest of my crew to watch yeah. if I'm off doing something else. Yeah. Oh, it yeah. must be so fun That to day, watch I was her. definitely there that day. I was I, there that day. <laughs> you're like, I remember that day. For... I remember that one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and what, was that one of the moments that, that really challenged you? Were there other moments that really challenged you on set? Yeah, that, that, that was challenging. There was towards the end, there was a couple scenes where their rockets actually taking off. And and um, that day shooting where we were, the winds were blowing about 40 miles an hour. No. So everybody's outside. All, all, all the principal actors are outside and their hair is just going and oh, so it's like yeah. when it starts blowing that hard, there's really nothing you can do. Right. Because even if you reset it, it you're outside, you're in an element. So I haven't seen that episode yet. So I hope maybe they fixed it a little bit. I don't know. <laughs> but, the you know, it, it looked real because it's supposed yeah. to be like the space. Exactly. Take, yeah. Take, you know, so, but that was like you sit back and go, oh, you know, <laughs> it's just oh, like there's nothing God. you can do. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you that have to was give probably it, give one it of the most challenging days. Uh, it was coming up in I think that's in like episode 10. But yeah. Where where did yeah. you guys film again? 
In New York. Okay. New York. Yeah. That's what I yeah. thought. Okay. All I, over New York. I thought. Yeah. 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 Um, and that was, at, I think that location was, I thought, remember, I think it was Long Island, I think. But all over New York, Long Island, you know, the stage was um, in, in uh, Brooklyn. Steiner. Brooklyn, New York. So, yeah. I, I live Steiner, right. thank you. Yeah, right, right by right. Steiner. Um, yeah. How do you work? To, okay, so let's talk about your team for for this. I I love talking, and my listeners like to hear about the organization of the team and how you delegate. And can you share a little bit with um, me, like how you how you lead your team on a project like this? Yes. Is it different yes. than film at all, or is TV? No, no. Okay. This is basically like doing these these cable, these uh streaming shows now. It's basically like doing a a middle budget sixty million dollar movie now. Got it. Because either you have the three hundred million dollars or you have low budget. So I feel like this is doing your old school $60 million motion picture because, because you, you know, you want it to look as good as you can, you know, yeah. so even though it's not film, it's, it's a little different than it used to be. It's not like law and order, you know, right. as I say, you know, you know what I mean? it's not like just doing cops here. This, you know, there's a lot sure. more that goes into it with, you know, so, um, yeah. Yeah. So, well, I, uh, basically I have a, it's myself and I have a key who's really my right hand and I usually delegate like with Shirley, it's, Shirley was in a lot of stuff. So I had Kristen, Edwards, who's an amazing hairdresser, um, take care of her. And I had Andre Gunnerman, who was my other, my third hairstylist, take care of Joey and a couple other actors. And I did Myrtle and, uh, and uh, of course I did Billy and, um, and I did Barbara. And then the rest of my team, I had like 10 hairdressers doing all the background that worked, wow. you know, all the wigs in the yeah. background. And, and so, yeah, I'm, so you I'm, have to delegate it. You can't do it all yourself. It's all about teamwork. You know, you yeah. have to make sure you spread the work out. So you know, and that you trust the people that work with you. So if you have to leave and go do something, somebody could step up for you and, and just take care of it. How it's does not someone, with feeling comfortable. How do you find your um the people that you trust? What 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 appeals to you that makes you go, okay, I'm never letting this person go. <laughs> First of all, we gotta be a good hairdresser. <laughs> yeah. Number one. That's good. Um, they have to also not be actually the best hairdressers. They have to be a team player. Mm -hmm. They have to um uh, no drama. We don't like a lot of drama. You know, this is not about no egos. We leave the yeah. egos outside the door. Um, and in my trailers, I don't like that at all because it doesn't help anybody, mm -hmm. you know? And mm -hmm. sometimes I have to, I let my people do my people and I have to go take care of somebody else and we swap it out right. if we have to, you know, but for the actor's sake, they usually like that same person to follow yeah. them, you know, yeah. you know, and then yeah. once in a while, if you have to hand them off, then they're okay. You know, they just right. get comfortable with somebody and it's, yeah. they, you know, you know, it's all about them because they're in front of the camera. So, of course, yeah, that, and, you know, trust is everything. You just want to make sure you run the, if you the feel trust, these people trust somebody. Yeah. Problem solver. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. And also too, they just got to be ready to step up and, you know, if you have to leave or if somebody yeah. gets hurt, if I have to walk away, that person has to step up and, and do my job for me if I can't be there. Right. So you have to really have trust in those people. Without a lot of hand holding. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You don't need a lot of hand holding. That's what right. Got, right? You can do some hand holding for people that are new coming in to, mm -hmm. to work and you want some new people because they usually really want to learn. Sure. Of course. You can all learn all the time. And that if you, but on period shows, it's really hard for that. There's no time. Yeah. You know, you have, I bet. You really have to have, know the craft to get in there and be able to do it. Yeah. And get everybody ready in a certain amount of time and get everybody out there and set. So. Yeah. yeah, it's a, it sounds like you. There's really a, a system in place that's very effective for these shows. There is, yeah. yeah. There is, yeah. Um, yeah. How did you come to this particular project? Well, I um, I think probably my reputation for period hair. I mean, I do both, but I've done a lot of period hair. My background comes from the theater, so oh, does I, it? So, yeah. So when I oh. came to the movies, I was kind of like got right in there on the period shows because I, you know, I knew all the periods, so I just had to clean up my act to make That's it, you amazing. know, better for the camera. Yeah. And I, I had worked with um, Apple before on a bunch of shows, Dickinson and Lisey's story. And, and I had an interview with Billy and five minutes later after the interview, they called me and hired me. So I guess he liked me. So what <laughs> is Billy, go. what is Billy like? He's such a genius. Oh, he's the, best. A the best. The yeah. Best. yeah. Oh. Nicest guy in the world. I, I bet know. so professional and just like yeah, so about professional, the work. so talented and, and no drama, you know, but he's he, he knows what he wants. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. he knows he knows if you don't know what you're doing, you know, oh, so you gotta know oh, what you're I doing. Bet. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I bet but he's I really bet. a great leader. And he comes from the theater too. So that must he have does. Been kismet. Yes, he does. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um can you tell me a little bit about how you got started in the industry at all? Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh god. Well, you want a long story or a short yes, story? <laughs> I want the long one. <laughs> okay. 
Well, I started off in a salon. I'm from Los Angeles originally. Okay. Um, and I'm, I'm not going to tell you the year because you're going to know by what okay. I tell you. But <laughs> um, and as a hairstylist in the salon. And then I uh, was dating a guy. He was in a, in a show that came to California called Beatlemania. It was a Broadway show. And he was the drummer. And um, so I would go backstage and hang out. And I started like hanging out in the hair room. And so this guy, Butch, I started learning how to do wigs with him. And then all of a sudden. Oh, that's a great name. I know. So then I, I get a phone call saying, hey, you want to go on the road and do a tour of Beatlemania in Canada? And I said, oh, this is like I'm 21 years old, right? And I said, sure. So I went and did that. I realized I really liked it. Mm. Came back to L.A., went to Joe Blasco and learned makeup and hair, went to another to learn the theatrical side and movie side of it. And, yeah. and then I got a lot of shows that came through. I ended up moving to New York. I did 25 big Broadway shows. And then I did was in you? New York. And yeah. What were some of your favorites? Oh, Dream Girls, 42nd <gasps> Street, The Secret Garden. Uh, into the woods, oh. King and I, how to succeed in business without really trying. And there's a bunch of arsenic and lace, tons of them. But my last one I did was Titanic, the musical Titanic. And what and made you say made now turn. I'm okay. What, 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 what prompted that turn? Well, I the started schedule. getting different. <laughs> well, <laughs> once I got it. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted, I always kind of wanted to do film and I was dipping in it outside mm-hmm. of the theater a little bit here and there. Then after I took my union test in New York, uh, but one of my mentors, Colleen Callahan, was doing a uh, was take, giving the test, and I got like a ninety nine. So, so all of a sudden, I was doing my first film was a Beautiful Mind with her. Oh wow! And so, yeah, so I got started on that, and then from there, I just kept doing film after film. So yeah, wow. been doing it a long time. That's amazing. <laughs> I had two different careers: theater and now film. <laughs> yeah. Wow! Yeah. Yeah. Now, yeah. Um, are they, they? They're two different unions, yeah. The Broadway and the film. No, it's the same. Oh. Oh, okay. Same, there is. There, I'm in both. There's LA, there's LA, and then there's ah, New York. Got it. I, but but you have to take the you have to be there's a journeyman, which I am. Yeah. And there's a theater division. So yeah, you the theater okay. division or the movie division. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. I got it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then now I I I have to ask you about my favorite movie. <laughs> Uh oh, what is it? <laughs> it's uh, I just wanted to ask you what it was like working on The Greatest Showman. I just love oh my it God. so much. It's like that was a secret. I don't understand why people like it's not Moulin Rouge or something. It's it's so good. And tell me, I want to hear about that. Okay, well, that's what I was going to talk about that too. Um, so um, my friend Jerry Populus was the department head. Um, was department heading it and uh asked me to be in charge of the oddity. So my job was department heading all the dancers. Okay. So I took wow. care of all the all the freaks and the all the dancers in the show. So all the big numbers, that was all me and my team. Oh. And then there was the trailer with all the principals, and there was my team, and then there was the background team. So we had a lot of fun. I mean, it, it was just, I mean, every day was creating all those characters, you know, from the all of them was a lot of fun. And a lot yeah. of it came out of my own kit. Like cause they were asking, you know, because we were there, we we're like building stuff and uh, like the albinos wig was something we took right. us like three weeks to build. I had five <gasps> people standing there doing all the dreadlocks and making every single one of them. Oh, wow. A, a base wig. Yeah. And uh, yeah. And so it was a lot of fun. And the best part of that was Hugh. I mean, what a great, another one that he's so nice to everybody that makes a whole environment so much fun. How does Whatever. he do that? I mean, I he has know. every he, right to be kind of a jerk and he does I not. Know. Do- you know, he knew everybody's name. Oh, everybody. God. You know, it's like, how do you do that when you're starring in a show? I don't know. He's a phenomenal, but, and every day when we were doing all those numbers, you know, the dance numbers, everybody, we would all sit in the stands while they're oh, in the arena wow. doing all the dance. It was, everybody was dancing and singing and we all had so much fun. It oh, was, that music. Well, just... It was a really great, really great show. Lots Amazing. Of fun. It's the greatest yeah. show, actually, Susie. It's the yeah. greatest show. It's the great, it is the greatest <laughs> show. <laughs> and everybody from all the work from there to trailer work, to the background work, to costumes, everything, we all just got along and it was just fun. It's a great oh. experience. That's yeah, wonderful. Really yeah, stuff. I think yeah. that was they filmed that at Steiner too in Brooklyn. I we did find that. Yeah, Steiner. okay. And actually, uh, no, I'm uh, make a correction on where we shot. Um, um, hello, tomorrow. Um, hello tomorrow. We actually we did it at um, uh, Broadway stages. That oh, was okay. The, it, it was Broadway stages, not Steiner. Now that I think I, I've been to so many. We we'll go back. Which one did I do? There were so. Oh my god! It was Broadway stages, but the greatest show definitely was Steiner. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I remember yeah. my friend um did the dolly for, for that. So I, oh, okay. he would oh, okay. send me like little sneaky BTSs and I was oh, like, okay. the day this comes out, I am going. And I did with yeah. my dad, dad and son. Yeah, and so, was, much like, fun. I know. so much fun. Incredible. Yeah. Um, so tell me about that little award you have in the background there. I see Oh, it. that's <laughs> for, that's for impeachment. <laughs> 
for doing Clive Owen on impeachment. Let me tell you about impeachment. That (laughs) was so good. Yeah, oh, oh, I'm glad you liked God. it. Yeah. I loved it. So you did Clive yeah. Owen for that. Tell, I did Clive. Me. I just did Clive on that. I do. I do him a lot. He's one of my guys. I do. Yeah. Oh, he yeah. was. He was incredible. So, so then you got the Emmy for that. What was that like? Did you, I did? Were well, you I was. Surprised? We were in France. Or? I was in France. I didn't get oh. to go. Oh, but no! I have it right here. I was in France doing it. My my film with him called Once You Spade, and so we were in France. So I didn't get to go. But the girls all called and sent me photos, and I got the Emmy. I just wasn't able to be there. That I was on other ones, but I've got nominated a couple other times. I've been what, there. What, were, what else were you nominated? One what were you well, nominated the Nick, for? The Nick, mm-hmm. we were two years of the Nick. Mm-hmm. So you're, yeah. are you Clive's personal or on I am films? Yes. Okay, got it. I am. Okay, yeah. and what, what's that like being a personal? Can you talk a little bit about the difference oh, it's, between well, being a it's, personal? Um, well, it's a lot different. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. you just do one person. Yeah, wow. Well, yeah, <laughs> I know that. Right, um, exactly. It's like when you're doing one person, especially when they're number one or number two, whatever one he is just depending on who else is in the movie. Mm-hmm. Um, they treat you a little bit better, I have to say, because you're kind of like above the line when you go in with them. So you can ask for a little more. They're, you're kind of like his, I've become his friend too, so he relies on course. me to be standing by. Um, and I think that's with a lot of actors with personals. It just feels like not only do they like what you do for them, you, they're also friends. So they feel yeah. comfortable around you. And so everybody, you know, wants to ask me questions about Clive. And I'm like, I don't know why you ask him. You know, it's like, you know, because he's like a super nice guy. You, know? you also don't want to overstep your, of I've been course. working with for about nine years now till we get a point where you can answer for them because that could turn against you. So I, I keep yeah. it totally professional. And yeah. when we go out together and have fun together, that's a different side of it. So yeah. That's a really a, good tip. A, yeah. But I, it's, it's nice to do both, to department head and do period stuff. And then when I get, get a chance to work with him, when he calls, I go because he's just a great guy. So now can yeah. you talk, are you comfortable talking to me about how, like, um, I always, my goal in life and with this podcast is to get people, uh, who are on the, who are the makeup department head and the personal to have everybody get along <laughs> and work together. <laughs> and sometimes yeah. that's not always the case. And don't, don't you see the value in everyone? Sometimes, sometimes the teams can be a little bit like, Oh, you know, uh, make a it's stigmatized a little bit right about oh yeah, yeah. the the divide yeah. or the line but don't you yeah. agree that we're all on the same team making oh exactly group? yeah when i'm a department heading and somebody comes in as a person i'm like thank god it right. takes one person one less off my person. plate so i think yes. that's a great thing so when yes. i go in i hope i get treated the same way um I, there's people that don't do that though and i've experienced that yeah before i'm not going to mention any names because we don't I do hear that, about but... that yeah. <laughs> yeah i do hear um, about it a lot yeah, but I'm always very happy as a department and when somebody brings somebody and I try to make them feel comfortable. And, and then, you know, you have to think about that too. That's one less person you have to do. For sure. You and know, you got enough to do as department head. You need to do everybody, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. And I noticed that like, you know, um, I, I saw it on um, Tammy, um, the eyes of Tammy Faye that they all were a family and it got them the Oscar to be united yes. like that. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm exactly. They got the Oscar for a lot of reasons, but that was yeah. definitely, <laughs> yeah. it definitely yeah. helped to be for a lot of reasons. family. You guys are all a big family and, and making everything yes. look amazing. It really helps when you all talk to each other and there's no, no egos and everybody's because the more you collaborate together, the better it's going to be. You know, I, yes, yeah. absolutely. Better it's absolutely. Be. And the days are so long. Why make them? Oh, longer? yeah. <laughs> God. Yes. There's nothing worse than have people you don't get along with for 18 hours. And you're I, like, oh, my God, I know. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we don't Do want you, that. We, I hate no, that. <laughs> no, 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 no. We don't want that. No. Do you have any other pieces of advice, Susie? You've, you're such a had such a long and fruitful career, and I, I, I do you have any other pieces for advice for somebody who are getting who's getting into the industry now? Yeah, I would say um, go to school, yeah. uh, learn as much as you can, um, train as much as you can. It's always good to know. Like we, I was just working on a show called Feud that's been here this day playing for my friends that are on it. Feud too, and um, it's you know said in the 1960s and the 1970s, and they brought in like all of us, you know, like people that we have. There's one guy that works that's 80 something years old who's been doing movies forever, and he's there doing background. And some to watch him do hair wow. is like watching. Uh, there's nobody that doesn't like him. His name right. is Victor Di Nicola, and he has this one thing he does for the 60s that's like you can't match it. It's like mm. so you, I try and get everybody to stand around him and learn. You should learn from everybody. I, I learn all that. the time. So we all, even though I department head, I personal, I, if I, if somebody needs my help, I love going doing background. Yeah. You know, I get to see what everybody's doing and everybody kind of shares the thing and it, it's really great. So yeah. And, yeah. And, and also, and, and, and you know, also too, I'd have to say the most important thing is 
be on time, <laughs> show up. <laughs> That's so important. Why do we do. have to say that? I know. <laughs> exactly. I know. There's so many people. Like, All you got to do is show up. <laughs> some people just. That's a, I, I know that's a big thing of mine. Like, it's just be on time. You know, be early, yes. be on time. I mean, everybody gets in an accident or something, but there's those people that are always, uh-huh. and it's like, what do you think that's about? Them. What is that about? I don't know. I, I don't think either. that's just part of their, um, I don't know. I, yeah. I, I still can't figure that out. Self-sabotage or some, some I, kind I of strange, <laughs> strange I thing. And learn, and my biggest thing is you can learn from anybody. You know, if yes. you're on set, learn from everybody that's there because everybody's got something to offer. And then you learn and you watch everybody and you put it together for yourself and mm-hmm. you make it your own. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. that's pretty much the best way to do it. I think. Has, <laughs> has an actor ever taught you something like sometimes, you know, like you, sometimes you hear about an actor being like, let's try this. Have you, has, has, has there been a moment ever where someone sort of put a new idea about how to do something in your head? Um, well, actors are always, well, here's the thing about hair. Everybody does their own hair. So a lot of times when they yeah. actually come to them, they know what they want, they'll like, you know, show them something and then they'll go, well, maybe if we go to this side or interesting, or maybe, you know, I kind of like it better like this. And then you look at them and go, well, you know, they're right. You're right. Okay. You're absolutely right. You know, because a lot of times like with makeup, it's a little bit different with hair. Everybody, every gets up every morning yeah. and brushes their hair. Yeah. And especially well, the guys, the guys are very picky about their hair. I have to say they sure They've are. always got something, <laughs> you know, going on. Or, yeah. So, <laughs> they do have ideas. I mean. Yeah. My my son has started asking me to help him with his hair, but literally nothing is good enough. Like, I'm like, <laughs> no. why, why am I here? Like, just exactly. learn to do yep. this yourself. And listen that. to the men because a lot of times they know what they want and then you go and, yeah. you know, yeah. I always listen to them. Yeah. And then you, I mean, if, if I don't agree with it, I'll kind of just don't say anything. I'll just work my stuff into it. Mm. You know what I mean? And then all of a sudden they go, oh, okay. And then all comes, yeah. I like you that. You never want to go like this. You don't want to butt heads. That yeah. doesn't help anything. No, 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 no. <laughs> that just makes it worse. Yeah, not good. <laughs> Do you have any advice too about how, uh, keeping the length of the career that you have? Like, how, you are always learning. You said that, which which right, can right. help you feel like rejuvenated all the time. Is right. there anything else that you keep in mind? Do you take a vacation? Do you book out like a s- certain amount of yes. time? I do. I, well, yes, I, you try to. I mean, it's really hard in this business yeah. to take a vacation because. Sometimes you'll get offered something and then you got something right after that. And mm-hmm. I've done a lot of back-to-backs. Now in the last five years, I've gotten a little bit older and I'm saying, you know what, maybe I'm just going to not take this one. Mm-hmm. I get a little bit more picky because I need a little time off. You know, yeah. I think it's important to take some time off and have a life because this just, if you keep going and going and going, you're going to be old and you're going to be so tired and unhealthy. Yeah. yeah. So there's, there's always enough time. You always get another job. But we right. always, anybody in this business so that we're never going to work again once yeah. that job's yeah. over. You know, we're never going to work again. It's like, we all feel that way. And so we all automatically jump on something else. I would say, yeah. And just, um, and love what you do. You know, if you find mm-hmm. that you're not happy doing mm-hmm. what you do and then you should get out and go do something else because yeah. this is not an easy thing to do. Yeah. I think you have to really love what you do to stick with it. And I do love what I do. That's why I'm still here. You can you tell, know? you can yeah, definitely you know, tell. So, yeah. And if you don't, you know, there's times where it's gotten rough. Where it's like, why am I here? Why am I doing this? Why am I standing on the street in New York city when it's zero degrees out and the wind's blowing? <laughs> I'm standing on here for what? You know? And then you go, oh, okay. Then you go back to the trailer and you realize, okay, I guess this is why I'm doing it. Cause I love what I do. Yeah. I don't want to work at a bank. Right. So it's right. like, you know, like, right. You know? Right. And, and I would say love what you do. And you're you know, working you know on, you you're working on feud now. You said. I was, I was oh. a couple of weeks ago. They, they wrapped already. Here, oh, but, they did? Yeah. Well, I'm excited. Well, they just wrapped. They're in LA right now. I think they're getting ready to wrap okay. today, actually. Okay. They were here. I just looked, I came back from France in December and I was, I was just hanging around and my friends were on. said, come over and play with this. So I was just go three days to like three days a week. Okay. Yeah, so that was oh, fun. That's, nice. that's yeah. going to be a great one coming out too. It's gonna, it's, it looks great. It's going to be Truman fun. Truman Capote, yeah. the women yes, behind Truman, Truman. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Truman Capote yeah. gets a lot of Stories. I know, I know. There's a <laughs> lot of them. I know. I love it. Always you know? something new to discover about Truman Capote. Exactly. <laughs> um, and everybody else can absolutely devour this show on Apple TV. It's great. It's called Hello Tomorrow, and you can see Susie's work there. And I will be watching. Let's see. It's week. It's it's gone out weekly, so you have to catch up if you haven't already, and then you can watch it weekly. Um, it's a great show and your work is fantastic, Susie. I can't wait to see what's next. 
Thank you. Thank you. Look Behind the Look is a Vinyl Foot production written by me, your host, Tiffany Bartok. Produced by Jace Bartok, edited by Evan Rivard. If you're interested in learning more, find our video version on the YouTube channel, Look Behind the Look Podcast. There you can see rare photos and clips from our guests. And please follow us on Twitter at Look Behind Pod and Instagram at Look Behind the Look. If you like the show, please rate, review, and subscribe. And tell your friends and spread the word. You can subscribe to us on iTunes or any podcatcher of your choice. Thanks for listening to Look Behind the Look.